the second Sunday after the Epiphany, Year B, from Psalm 139. My body was not hidden from you while I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our readings for this morning discuss the ways we prepare for that manifestation of divinity which is the hallmark of the season of Epiphany. Nathaniel, sheltering alone with his thoughts under the low-hanging branches of a fig tree when Philip comes to tell him about Jesus. His comment about Nazareth indicates a not particularly optimistic mood. When Jesus then says that he saw Nathanael under the fig tree before Philip called him, Nathanael responds with adoring amazement. Indeed, the nature of Nathanael's response suggests that he must have been worrying about the future of his people, since Jesus' knowledge of his concerns indicates that he is the Son of God, the King of Israel. Likewise, in our first reading, Samuel is unprepared to recognize the voice of God because the word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. Nevertheless, Samuel's time with Eli has trained him to respond faithfully to a voice calling him in the night. God has known and been working within Samuel since even before he was conceived, and that grace mirrors the work Samuel does within the temple, tending the lamp of God and remaining near the ark, which contains evidence of God's miraculous deeds. Sometimes we ourselves do such things, tending the light of God's love and remembering God's gracious works without really being fully aware of what we're doing. Then, when God does speak to us, we too are ready to say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And we may open the doors of our hearts to share what the Spirit is saying to God's people, allowing none of our words to fall to the ground. In Paul's words, we are called to behave as though we know our bodies to be temples of the Holy Spirit within us. Our acts, tending to the needs of our bodies, therefore should be considered in light of their value as preparation for welcoming the Holy Spirit's presence. Does this food, this company, this particular pleasure nourish me to respond to the Holy Spirit's call? How might we tend the lamp and set the table and open the doors of the house of the Lord? How might we devote our sitting down and our rising up, our thoughts, our journeys, and our resting places, so that we might greet the Spirit, saying, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. In the name of that Lord, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.